in Melbourne, Australia. And in this paper, we are to present two contributions. The first contribution relates uh, a, a time-honored approach to fully observable non-deterministic planning, which is symbolic synthesis, as MVP, the planner by Chimati did in back in, in the early 2000s, and dynamic programming. Dynamic programming as in solving Bellman development equations. And the second contribution, it's a flexible and generic framework to search for policies that have specific properties, such as being a strong cyclic, which will be the main focus of, of, our, of our work. Besides that, I mean, at the beginning, I will just give a, bit, a brief overview of the our formulation of fully observable non-deterministic planning, and at the end, we will discuss the experiments we did with with our with our planner, and we also discuss further work and related work. What's the motivation of this work? Well, this I'm presenting this paper here because the paper I presented last year in, in ICAPS in Rome where we show how to compile the problem of behavior composition, which is that of combining, of co coordinating as a, a given set of simple devices to realize a complex behavior. And we compile that into fully observable non-deterministic planning. And in our, in our experiments, we tested our compilation with model checkers and with uh, forward planners, right? And to our surprise, a model checker outperformed the state-of-the-art font planner PRP by Chris Moose over there, in a specific set of instances, which were in crazy instances. I mean, actually, they made sense. It's not some kind of server room kind of a scenario. Actually, made sense. So the question that we were, I mean, we wouldn't, we were really puzzled was why and how, because model checkers are theoretically impaired by the complexity first of the OBDD compilation, and this paper by Bardi actually goes to great depth to discuss how hopeless that that can be. And also that the key operation used by symbolic model checkers to solve non-deterministic planning problems, which is projection, when you project the transition function in order to find which are possible actions which can lead to the goal or to preconditions of actions that lead eventually lead to the goal, is intractable for OBDs. Intractable as in MP hard. So how come that the font planner who was so I mean, perform so, so badly compared to a model checker, which is supposed to be ha very handicapped. Our observation is that font planners sometimes are too committed to the heuristic that they use to solve non-deterministic planning problems, which is the all outcomes determinization. So our model of planning, font problems usually are, repre are they're represented in a factor form where we have a set of Boolean state variables. In our case, we're using a literals with explicit negation, initial state, a goal condition, an operator set where the operators are made of preconditions which specify which is the condition which is necessary in order to the action to be valid to be executed, and a set of non-deterministic effects which describe the conditions of possible states you may end up after doing that action. The semantics of, of, of this factor representation correspond to the more traditional flat state representation of non-deterministic models that we all know where we have a set of flat states, initial state, a function that tells us which are the actions that can don, be done in, in one particular state, a transition function, and action costs. The solutions to these non-deterministic models are policies or conditional plans. In our, in our paper, rather than using the notion of deterministic policy, which is the usual or most common one you can see in the literature, we were working with non-deterministic policies, very much as MVP did back in the day, right? And the suitability of these policies is given by the cost of the, their executions. And these, these costs are described first in the Bellman equation for non-deterministic non search mo state models, right? Where basically it's telling you which is the worst case cost to go to reach the goal. And the mean mean relaxation by Ronet and Gerner, which is the optimistic expectation of how many actions you will need to do to reach to the goal. The interesting thing is that while the worst case, the Bellman equation, has no solution for many policies of interest, I mean, the, still we can figure out which are, I mean, one find these, these policies just using the mean mean relaxation. Taking the values of the of the Bellman equations, we can categorize the, the, the possible solutions to non-deterministic planning problems into three categories. Weak policies, which basically means that at least one execution of that policy reaches the goal, where the mean relaxation is finite over some of the reachable states when executing the policy, but the Bellman equation is infinite. 
the, sorry, the worst case equation is infinite. A strong policies which say, which guarantee that all executions of the policy are finite and reach the goal, where both the mean mean relaxation and the worst case equation are finite for every reachable state under the policy. And then the interesting middle ground, the strong secret policies, where every finite execution of the policy is wanted to reach the goal, which basically means that the minimum relaxation is finite for every reachable state, but the worst case equation will be actually infinite because you can keep been looking, looking over an indeterminate number of times of the same state. From these three categories, Daniel Traverso Bardi, 14 years ago, established what they call the symbolic connection, that basically you can check the existence of these policies over a given non-deterministic model as a task of, of a model checking over computational tree logic, where basically for each of the three kinds of policies, weak, strong, and strong cyclic, we have uh, statements in computational tree logic which are true. Like for instance, if the weak policies exist, then eventually, in some point in the future, when executing that policy, we will be re reaching the goal. When it's in a strong policy, it's like always, whatever, whatever happens, we will be reaching the goal. And the, the, the strong cyclic policies, which you have the operators which are nested. First, you have the, the guarantee that whatever you are, you may get to the, to the, to the goal in, in eventually. But that's true for every state, which basically means that if you loop, you are still wanted to be able to to get to the goal. This was exploited by the, in the, the planet MVP, which was based in a very well framework for verification called USMB, that uses an OBD representation of the transition function and the non-deterministic policy. And then the projection, I mean, the existential quantification of the stat variables, it's, an, it's called uh, weak pre-image. Basically, what it does is, by regression, identify which are the states and actions which are relevant to the goal. MVP. Once it does its regression, then checks if the possible the possible actions suggested by the policy are I mean consist uh, are actually uh, is, a, is actually a closed policy. If it's not a closed policy, those pairs of states and actions are removed. Observed by, by Bonnet and Gevner in their in their book, recent book is the the fact that MVP can be understood as solving deductively the equations for the minimum relaxation. And the, and the worst case Bellman equation. But my question was, how exactly? I mean, what's the exact correspondence? I want to start by observing that the weak premature operation operator is actually identifying sets of states and actions which are relevant to goals and preconditions by regression, which is basically another way of saying that the weak premature operator does what we know in planning as local regression, just from one single action, does that over the world transition function in one single shot. We, you know, in our paper, we we borrow the um, I will say the the notation and the and, and part of the results that Joseph Rintanen discusses in his Ikai 20 paper, and we end up with a, a, a definition of a regression operation for non-determinism, which is weaker than the definition that Joseph has in his paper. Which basically every of what we have end up is that the result of regression is a DNF formula where each of the DNF clauses denotes a subset of states where an action is applicable, and then when doing a certain action, then states where the condition phi holds may be reached. With that in one hand, we can think of the structure that, let's say, contains all the possible, possible executions given a domain, right? We call that the causal graph, which is not a great name, but because, I mean, there are so many of them. But basically, each of the vertices of the, of the graph, it's a possible conjunction of the literals. So this is huge, as you can imagine. And then the edges are labeled with the operators and dummy, opera dummy operators that stand for the goal, which basically, if you, when you reach the goal, you stay in the goal, whatever, there's no action applicable, actually. And if you reach it to that, then there's also no action applicable. And we note that also with a specific uh, dummy symbol. The set of edges correspond, on one hand, to pairs of conjunctions which are related by regression, which means basically that there exists an operator that when doing regression over the formula psi, you end up with a, something which is entailed by the formula uh, phi, and then the edges corresponding to these self-absorbing self -absorbing loops, corresponding to the goal and to the dance. But of that massive graph, actually what we care about is the, bit, the, the part of the graph which is directly related or indirectly related to the goal. 
and we call that the, the causal relevant graph, which is a subgraph of this massive set of paths between, between conjunctions of literals. And that this subgraph is results from removing those vertices from which there's no path to the goal. The paths in this graph correspond exactly to the valid plans, not the optimal, the valid plans of the all outcomes relaxation. So in one sense, I mean, we can see that MVP and the fund planners like NDP, FIP, PRP, or even MDP planners like the ones by Andre, they are all operating in a very similar object, if not exactly the same object, which is this kind of causal connections between statements about the world states. How do uh, the state of the art forward planners use this use this this structure? Basically, they sample shorter paths. When I say sample, basically, is that they use a classical planner that will choose one of the shortest paths. Any of them depends on what heuristics they are using, what's the search strategy of the planner, right? And then these paths are then generalized by regression to suggest possible entries into a policy. So, to start, I mean, the first result is. What's the relationship between, well, let's formalize this kind of obvious relationship between forward planners and symbolic, plan, and symbolic model checkers. Basically, the first thing is this very complicated thing basically says that with each application of the weak pre image, each time you regress through the transition function, what you're actually doing is uncovering a never bigger portion of the causal graph, of the relevant causal graph. This, this relationship, I mean, discussing the, the proof, I mean, basically, we can understand this causal relevant graph as the models of the formulas derived by MVP, because models of computational tree logic are paths. Basically, this is encoding the paths that give sense to the formulas that derives MVP. MVP, and pretty much every symbolic model checker and symbolic planner I know about, considers all possible pairs of sets and states and actions. So it's totally indirected. There's no sense of guidance towards more relevant states or more relevant actions. And as importantly, does a lot of work on parts of the search state, the search space, which is not reachable from the initial state. So there's a lot of wasted effort in that symbolic computation. And what's the relationship with the, the relationship? Is it, since we can relate the paths to the modes of the formulas, then we can see that every time we apply the weak pre image operator in MVP, and we, are, and we count how many applic applications we have done so far, we are assigning the value, well, actually we are computing the value of the mean relaxation for a big number of states. So and what does our approach? Our approach basically they, uh, start, uh, uses, keeps two partial non-deterministic policies, or search queues to say so. When where it represents all, this, all the partial policies that we know that are closed and reachable, that are strong cyclic, and then the policies which are somehow related to, this, to, this, to, to the ones that are we know to be closed. And then we only do regression over the, the, the partial policies that we know to be closed, and just once, right? So rather than just exploring all possible transitions, we prioritize, we prioritize the transition suggested by the partial policies we know that may be a feasible solution. Then the set of closed policies is extended by checking exhaustively all our pending partial policies that we don't know if they still if they are closed or not. We use heuristic evaluation function that uses the, the the Q value of this policy, which basically is the the length of the the shortest the, sh the length of the shortest path in the causal relevant graph. And we also use a classical planning heuristic of computed over the, over the all, outcomes, all, all outcomes determination that allows us to, to give, guide this process of regression towards the initial state. And the search stops, obviously, whenever we find the initial state. Details. For recognizing strong circuit policies, we reformulated the algorithm HDP by Bonnet and Gevner in 2003 for computing close MDP policies. We observed that we, in principle, could use any algorithm. As a heuristic, we chose to use the additive heuristic over the allowed determination, as I said before. The interesting observation is that you only need to compute the heuristic once, because we're doing regression. And then we use the best of our possible invariants from fast forward to get a notion of mutexes and rule out states, conditions that denote sets of states which are not reachable from the initial state. And then basically we switch 
from trying to grow the set of partial policies we know we are closed to actually exploit those partial policies we know that closed. Basically, when we see that the 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 policies in the base in the, the part of the policies in the in base policy are deemed to be worse by evaluation function. We put it together into a planner called here we call Grendel, right? And then we compare Grendel with PRP and with MVP. The results were interesting, actually. I think is that Grendel is faster and has a slightly greater coverage over triangle tire wall. Triangle tire wall was discussed two talks ago, has the dense the optimal plan in the, the all outcomes determination, it's not an execution of any strong cyclic policy. And this difference became greater when we modified triangle tire wall to use the original action schema from tire wall. It basically means that tire, triangle tire wall only emits strong solutions and, triangle, and by using the original action schema, we only, I mean, the problem only accepted the strong cyclic solutions. We had the same coverage on, uh, on faults, which is a kind of diagnostic, diagnostic domain, and we performed extremely poorly on forest, blocks, world, and any stuff which were more like running IPC benchmark-like. Why Grendel performed better? I mean, this was something that we discussed with Christian in, in, in length because it was quite, I mean, there are many things that were possible, and the thing is that, that, that we basically, since we are avoiding the dense entirely, I mean, we don't get this problem, but PRP gets sometimes caught in the dents which are, which are not the dents in the determinization, but are the dents in the actual non-deterministic problem. Compared to MVP on tire world, except on non-trivial instances like first action, you dead, which is the a few of them, we could see that MVP was much performed much better than than us when the problem had no solution. So, the experiments expose the limitations on the all outcomes relaxation. I mean, it's really useful, but it's not just the only thing we need to do. And we don't need to 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 hug it too too strongly. The thing is that we need more benchmarks that are inter and represent interesting, non-deterministic problems, right? But these problems need to be meaningful. Then, as I we simplify, yes, we can rather than just taking the planner as a black box and throwing it at the at, at our at our target, actually, we can click onto the planner and take the bits and pieces that we want and combine them in order to overcome limitations of the black box approach approach. And then we show a deep connection with the model checking and dynamic programming, which are usually presented and discussed as like totally unrelated topics, but they are just like two points of view on the same thing. That's it. Time for a few questions. Problems that have no solution. So you said MVP outperformed Grendel. Yeah, entire most? world, entire world. I mean, entire world one is. Entire worlds where there's no. Yeah, I mean, the 15 instances, the original instances for the 206 competition. Yeah. The first instance is not interesting because it's basically the first action you do in the initial state. It gets. It. And you're yeah, yeah. And then, but in the problem, it was number 12. I mean, the big ones, the bigger ones, MVP was performing better. Okay, and so. Slightly better. So these approaches that work backwards, are you able to get some solution out of it? I mean, one of the original motivations that we never actually told it of PRP was that you can make it any time and just stop after five seconds, five minutes, whatever, and take what you've got. Actually, it's not strong cyclic, but it's something. <coughs> actually, we can do that. That's, that's, I mean, actually, we could, even when we hit the initial state, we could keep going and try to enumerate, if you have enough time, to enumerate all the possible policies. No, but an example ah. where there's no solution, like ah, yeah, in this yeah, tire yeah, world, yeah. will actually, you be able to get a policy? Actually, that? when you, you, you get a, a partial policy, which is the best thing you could, you could do. And it would still include the initial state? You'd be okay? No, because it, otherwise we wouldn't have solution. We will have solution. I mean, when, when I mean you have no solution, there's no strong cyclic policy. The so you're never going to get back. Okay. 